Hello. In this video, I will describe my technique of aqueous shunt implantation with specific reference to the Barveld implant. The Barveld 101350 has been shown in trials to be the most effective IOP lowering implant available. The Barveld is a very large plate and for good reason, a size plays an important role in the IOP lowering efficacy. While excellent long-term results are possible, these depend on careful surgical technique and case selection. The Barvault 101350 is not appropriate for all eyes. Some types of glaucoma require implants with a smaller plate size. Eyes such as those with severe chronic uveitis, especially with juvenile idiopathic arthritis, ocular ischemia such as severe neovascular glaucoma, extensive ischemia from chemical burns, or eyes that have undergone extensive or multiple CPCs. Such eyes are at a higher risk of chronic hypotony and are better suited to smaller implants such as the Barvelt 250 or an amid glaucoma valve. Or even in cases of very severe JIA or at other cases at a high risk of chronic hypotony, a single plate multino implant. There are two basic challenges in implanting all aqueous shunts. Firstly, ensuring that the plate is positioned sufficiently far from the limbus. Secondly, ensuring that the tube portion is positioned away from the cornea. A third important challenge with non-valve shunts, such as the Barvelt, is control of aqueous drainage after surgery. There are two basic challenges, therefore, ensuring that the plate is sufficiently far from the limbus and ensuring that the tube is away from the cornea. This is the correct position of the plate, around 10 millimeters from the limbus. And in the smaller box is the incorrect position, far too close to the limbus. The supratemporal quadrant is the preferred quadrant for implantation where feasible. Supranasal is best avoided due to the proximity of the superior oblique tendon and a higher risk of diplopia. In most cases, a 70 silk corneal traction suture and wide limbal peritomy will provide adequate access. Preoperative topical apraclonidine, epinephrine or phenylephrine can help reduce bleeding. While the case illustrated here has no significant subconjunctival scarring and access is easy. This is sometimes not the case. Such as in this 17 year old only eye with Rieger syndrome, two previous PKs, one previous Ahmed valve and one previous Barvelt 250. Two traction sutures inserted into the thin limbal sclera provide access with less traction on each than with one solo suture. On opening tenons, it's important to look for a tissue plane that leads back on the scleral surface between the recti. If access is inadequate, widen the peritomy and or make shallow relaxing incisions. Avoid deep relaxing incisions to overcompensate for a peritomy that's too narrow. Note in this case, despite very thin limbal sclera and scarred conjunctiva, the posterior subtenon space appears normal. The conjunctival incision has circumnavigated the posterior edge of the limbal thinning, avoiding the difficult area. I use 0.5 milligrams per mil of mitomycin in many cases on sponges under equatorial tenons prior to plate insertion. This is then irrigated with BSS. 
A muscle hook is used to clear any check ligaments under the adjacent recti that might obstruct insertion of the plate. This plate slid in more easily than average. Note the pre-placed supramid extra suture within the tube. After the plate is in place, Tenon's traction sutures improve access so that the plate may be sutured tightly to sclera. Secure the plate using non-absorbable diagonal sutures as illustrated here. These minimise both lateral and anteroposterior plate movement. Note how the Tenon's traction sutures, which are 7 silk, give good exposure while the plate is secured to sclera with the 9 proline. These prevent Tenon's becoming tangled up in the plate sutures and additionally keep stray eyelashes away from the plate. The second plate suture is the more critical one as this compresses the plate against the first suture, affording a very tight scleral fixation. And tight scleral fixation is important as it reduces micro movement of the plate and enhances biocompatibility of the implant, reducing encapsulation. Here, the eyelashes have escaped the confines of the drape, but the traction sutures have prevented them from contaminating the plate. The traction sutures provide excellent exposure for lash-free and tenos-free plate suturing in many of the poor access situations that we encounter. The tube is trimmed ideally with a long bevel to facilitate AC entry, and to minimise the chance of iris obstruction. Whether you trim the tube before or after AC entry, the length and course must be carefully planned. The oblique course illustrated here has three advantages over a more radial course. Firstly, the tube entry site will be at 12 o'clock, maximising lid coverage, improving cosmesis, and reducing the risk of exposure. Secondly, a more oblique entry reduces the bend in the tube at the entry site, minimizing dolphining and reducing the exposure risk. The third advantage is that if repositioning is required later, an oblique tube can be repositioned more readily, adding length in the anterior chamber. The planned entry site is gently cauterized. While the diameter of a barbell ramid valve is roughly equivalent to that of a 23 gauge or blue hypodermic needle, a 25 gauge or orange needle is safer when the entry site sclera is thin as seen here, reducing the risk of peritubular drainage. The ideal tube position should be very close to iris, avoiding cornea and parallel to the plane of the iris. Contrary to popular belief, a tube resting in the iris does not cause uveitis except in exceptional circumstances, but is less likely to damage corneal endothelium. The globe should be rotated to the primary position when entering the AC to facilitate entry along the iris plane. The position of the entry site will obviously be influenced by local anatomy, prior trabeculectomies, etc. The tube should fit snugly into the tunnel as it is fed slowly into the anterior chamber. Tube suture knots, especially proline, can erode through conjunctiva, resulting in tube erosion. So when securing the tube, sight the suture knots away from the limbus and away from the tube and bury them if possible. Prior to closure, I like to assess the rate of drainage from the back of the plate and add one or more ligatures if required. If more than a very slow flow is seen, I add a 10 nylon ligature that can be lasered in outpatients if required. In some cases, the supermid can be very tight like a cork. Here there is no flow despite supramid withdrawal.
To avoid the problem of the tight supermid, I now use 3O Ethlon, which like the supermid is also a 3O nylon suture. However, 3O Ethlon is often much looser than the supermid and prone to more brisk drainage. In this case, a stepwise reduction of flow was obtained with two 10O nylon ligatures, both of which can be lasered later. Postoperatively, in a different case, three ligatures can be seen at the slit lamp using a Blumenthal suture lysis lens. I also used to seal tissue glue to secure tutoplast fascia lata over the limbal tube, taking care not to cover the ligatures. The external end of the stent is secured temporal to the tube and amputated well away from the limbus to avoid later erosion through conjunctiva. The stent is positioned so that it is accessible for slit lamp removal with a low risk of conjunctival erosion. Tenons and conjunctiva are then mobilised and re opposed to the original peritomy site. They are then closed using tissue glue, assisted by two to three teno nylon interrupted sutures at the limbus. This is the appearance 12 years after surgery in the left eye and 17 years after surgery in the right eye of the same patient. The Barvelt glaucoma implant has revolutionised the care of such patients since the mid-1990s. In future, plates will likely stay roughly the same, but tubes are likely to become smaller, such as in the Paul glaucoma implant. I wanted to dedicate this video to the memory of George Barvelt, who very sadly died just over a month before I started to put it together. Thank you very much for watching.